Welcome back to the Kushtka channel. Got a fun one for you today. And I mean it this time. Could not help but treat my baby. This old 1992 OBS Chevy K1500 with a nice billet polished aluminum bow tie. You don't have to get these, but sometimes you just gotta spoil your truck, you know? I've owned this truck for about 11 years now and I've been rocking the old worn out plastic bow tie this entire time and recently painted it black with everything else and I just think a nice bow tie would pop. And if we got some time, go ahead and install this bug guard right here and some rain drip visors. All right, let's get to it. Okay, to get to the bow tie emblem, uh, the, there, I think there's a couple of ways we can go about this. First, first way, probably the preferred way or recommended way, is to remove the grill, which will have a bunch of these seven millimeters on top. There's like four up there, maybe a couple over here, and then it just pops right out. Um, oh yeah, you have, also have to remove your turn signal light housing. Mine, I believe, is a T20 Torx bit. Others will be screws. But I think I can just, yeah, I can reach my hand in here. And I think I might be able to leave the grill on. Because the only thing holding this on here is two plastic screws that I can reach. Yep, I can reach both of them with my hands. That's going to be kind of a pain. I don't know how well it's going to do when you when I'm taking it off, uh, or when I'm trying to install the other one, so we're going to go ahead and remove the grill. So I'm going to start with the parking lights, turn signal assembly, T20 Torx bit, and then we'll remove this grill. I'm missing some screws, but I at least got one, two, three, four, five, top. There's supposed to be one in here somewhere, but I'm missing it, so we'll start there. The emblem itself is held on by two half inch plastic screws. Just comes right out. And there's the plastic emblem. Okay, it looks like it comes with a couple little studs and new hardware. So we'll screw the little studs in on each side here. They are directional. I don't know if that'll pick up, but this has a little Allen head on it. This is tapered on one side. A little Allen uh, insert on the other. So I'll go ahead and hand tighten that.
All right, next we're gonna install this bug deflector. It looks like it's gonna be pretty straightforward. It came with a little bit of hardware. It came with uh, some alcohol wipes so that we can clean our surfaces. Uh, it came with um, these little bumper guard things. I'm missing a couple or three of them. So we'll clean the surface, stick these guys on here. That'll serve as our little bumper guard. And I'll also clean under the hood all the way across. You can see, I'll get you, I'll get you in here a little bit closer, but you can see that I have a couple little drill marks where the old bug guard went, but it doesn't perfectly line up with this bug guard. So we'll probably end up doing a little bit of drilling. <clears throat> this particular one, you can see some uh, tape right here. We'll uh, peel this back probably a couple inches on each side, get it lined up, stick it on there like so. And we'll want to match the tape to uh, this lip right here because it's a nice flat surface. And to line it up, you can see that there's this provided divot right here. Shows up on camera. Yeah, there it is. There's this divot. I'm gonna line this divot up because that looks like it's like dead nut right in the center. I'm gonna line that up with the center of the hood. The center of the hood has a little uh, raised pitch. So line it up like that. It should give me my desired outcome. Yeah, we'll see what happens, I guess. Should be pretty straightforward, so go ahead and get to cleaning. I'm gonna use acetone. So the idea is to get that adhesive to stick on this lip. It does make that bug guard stick out a little bit and it, to me that looks kind of funny but I think that's just how it's supposed to be. And you could just slam it all the way back so it fits nice and flush. I think the issue is down here though. If you go back all the way then your bug guard, when it comes down, slam into your grill there and so when it comes down you want to have just enough clearance to stay out of the way so I guess it'll be sitting more or less like that just a little bit of overhang it's not terrible I don't think so now that you see what we're up against here go ahead and uh, give it our best try also these are the holes i was referencing those don't line up exactly with the holes on the bottom here but that's okay because we can drill new holes after it's uh, all stuck on there all right let's go ahead and get this done we're going to go ahead and peel back this tape a little bit, just a couple of inches. Here. A couple inches there. That'll get us, allow us to get lined up well enough for our purposes. I meant to do beforehand was hit it with a torch so it sticks a little easier but it looks like it's sticking just fine. Next 
step we have these screws here with these little washers. So I'm going to use a 3 seconds bit. I have smaller bits somewhere, but I think this will do. I think it's just barely smaller than the threads here. Don't know how well that's going to show up, but I think that'll be just good enough. We'll see. show you how I did that there. It's on there nice and strong, has both the adhesive and it has the screws. All right, the big test is can we close it and open it back up again? I remove this grill here to see if I installed it correctly maybe I can get a little bit of clearance but while I'm at it I'm gonna change these lights out I have these uh, xenons and some Pia's that I bought for this truck a couple years ago and then I installed these lights in the dually or in, yeah then I installed these lights in the dually upgraded the dually lights to uh, these nice LEDs when I put these away and forgot about them until just now. guys we're looking pretty sharp here so we're gonna keep on moving while we got daylight we're gonna go ahead and hang these drip guards what else do they call these things rain guards drip guards smokers visors oh looks like this also comes with some wipes here uh, this is the AVS brand just like the bug guards we'll have a matching set here and I think between the emblem the guard the drip guards painted bumper new lights uh, the new turn signal assemblies will be looking pretty sharp here. So again, we're going to go ahead and use some acetone. You can use the alcohol wipes if you want to, but I just happen to have some acetone still, so it's already open. We'll save on those wipes for later. I'm going to go ahead and uh, clean up the, uh, the doors there. We'll be right back to you. Okay, we're getting ready to stick these bad boys on here, but I wanted to give you a couple of tips because these are adhesive and I know a lot of people like to hate on the adhesive kind because they like the kind that fit up into the door frame and they complain that these don't stick as well and they tend to fall off. Um, you might want to double check your technique there, boys. Uh, I've had a set now on my dually for almost a year and they are stuck on and it's survived all of the Alaskan rain snow ice freezing thawing winds overlanding through tight areas it's got beat on quite a few times and it hasn't fallen off yet so share some tips with you so that you can have a similar experience as myself so you're going to want to use acetone to clean your surfaces or alcohol don't use brake clean brake clean leaves behind residue Acetone does not leave behind residue. It's going to clean everything and that's why I prefer to use acetone because it gives you a nice clean surface and that 
that's paramount. That is absolute paramount to, um, to proper adhesion. The second thing you're gonna wanna do, especially if it's cold out like now, um, but if you live in a warm place and the metal is already warm, then you'll probably be all right. I'm gonna use, uh, I got some map gas here. I'm gonna heat the surface up after I clean it with acetone. This is gonna be a, a twofer. One, it's gonna heat the surface and a warm surface uh, is better for adhesion than a cold surface. Um, also, if there's any residue, there shouldn't be any residue left, but if there's any moisture residue or anything left over, then this is going to zap that in that final pass. So between acetone, making sure that you have a nice smooth surface, nice smooth and clean surface, and a little bit of heat, you'll have a winning, uh, winning combination and you shouldn't have any issues after that. Now if you have an old uh, OBS Chevy and you're doing this on a truck like mine, where you have a extended cab and you have those little quarter panel windows that just pop out ever so slightly, then your rear is going to be tapered like this. And the orientation of these uh, is crucial because you can see it's thin on one side and then it gets thicker on the other. You want the thick side pointing to the rear of your vehicle because your quarter panel windows are going to pop out ever so slightly and you're going to need that clearance. So those are the two main things or three main things. Use acetone, use heat, and if you have an extended cab, make sure that the thick side is pointing back because that's the way your window opens up and you need that clearance. Uh, also, a handy tip is to just peel this back, you know, a few inches on each side, get it lined up where you want it. If you get your orientation wrong and you need to pop it back off, uh, you, you know, you can do that without destroying all your adhes adhesion. Uh, but don't do that too many times because you'll, you'll ruin your adhesive and then everything else, all the other prep work doesn't matter at that point. Once this is ruined, it's ruined. So take your time, get it right the first time, and then you don't have to worry about it after that. And this is why acetone is going to be so important. So you guys see me working on this truck quite a bit. And so I got greasy fingerprints all over the place.
That's gonna do it though, guys. Not bad for a Sunday afternoon. I do say so myself. These old trucks come around pretty nicely. They don't, doesn't take too much for them. You know, just gotta update, update a couple of things here and there and it comes right back around. Uh, almost looks brand new. So I'll put a link for everything in the description for you so that you can check these things out for yourself. If you like the way this looks, you think you might wanna have something like this for yourself. Maybe you just got an OBS Chevy or maybe you're fixing one up to sell and so you want it to look nice and presentable and new and catch somebody's eye, then uh, well, we got all the videos for you. We got all the part numbers for you. We got all, got everything you need to get all uh, zoosed up. So hope this helped you out some way. Hope you found it entertaining. And I'm gonna go ahead and put a, I'm gonna end this video by putting a link to one of the other videos Maybe the headlights or the turn signals or the bumper. I'm not sure yet. You'll see at the end and then I'll let YouTube choose a video from my selection that they think you'll like best. We'll see how that turns out, but we'll see you over on that video. Later guys.